drop a like and do share leave your comments and do not forget to subscribe for more videos hello everyone welcome back to the course on introduction to material science and engineering offered by edupedia world the previous lectures we discussed about the process of diffusion and the theory behind diffusion how does diffusion take place in a material and what are its, its influences today we'll be starting a new unit of discussion we'll be studying about the different mechanical properties what is their relevance and uh, see the most important mechanical properties in this discussion so to begin with why is mechanical properties important the idea is that in order for any application right for any application the material needs to satisfy certain kind of properties if those properties are not met with the minimum criteria of those properties are not met with then that particular material cannot be used for that particular application and every application has a different set of property requirements which has to be present for proper application purposes therefore it is important to understand the different kind of mechanical properties which we need to look into in order to determine what is the appropriate material which we need to use now broadly speaking mechanical properties helps us meet the design specification it helps us identify what are the design specifications that a material has to have then mechanical properties a uh, understanding of the mechanical properties lets you understand what are the deformation mechanisms and as a result of that what are the possible failure mechanisms that can be present in a body and we can estimate the lifetime of a material for a particular application we can estimate when the failure is going to occur and this knowledge of a failure being able to predict that beforehand is very very important because the engineering materials are used in different scenarios from bridges to buildings to aircrafts to automobiles where any failure can be the difference between life and death and the knowledge beforehand of when a possible failure can occur will be very very handy therefore the knowledge of mechanical properties is quite important the knowledge of mechanical properties also lets you find the relation between microstructure and property right so the idea is different microstructure has different kind of property behaviors so only when you know what are the mechanical properties that needs to be identified in a given material you study those properties for different microstructures now once you know the property values for different microstructure you can pinpoint that okay i need this kind of microstructure or this kind of material for a particular application therein also comes your material selection right microstructure as well as what is the metal whether it is iron whether you are going for steel whether you are going for aluminium the material selection will also depend on what are the mechanical property requirements to be met and last but not the least you can create a very exotic material which has very good strength very good ductility it has very nice hardness impact resistance and what not but suppose it is so expensive that it has no practical application you cannot use it to build bridges you cannot use it to make new cars then it's just a showcase you are not going to bring it into practical application so last but not the least are economic considerations whether the material which we have is suitable economically for a particular application you certainly would like to have a material which has very good properties overall but you need to select a material which is the most cost effective without compromising with the safety of our requirements so this kind of gives you a glimpse of why mechanical properties is necessary to be identified and to be understood 
Now some of the mechanical properties which we will be studying in a little details in our unit are the tensile behavior, hardness, fatigue behavior, creep and impact behavior. What are each of them? Tensile behavior basically relates what is the response of the material when you load the material when you apply a load on the material whether it is tensile or compressive what is the response that the material is showing suppose you have a block you apply tension then for how much load how much force what extent of elongation is taking place that is what tensile behavior means hardness hardness is basically the resistance to indentation Suppose you have a load which is being applied, suppose you have a material and a point load of very high magnitude is applied at a particular location. So what is the resistance of the material to that indentation? That is where hardness comes into picture. Fatigue behavior is the behavior of a material under fluctuating load. In this case what we saw is that the load is constant. You have applied a particular load and you see the response that is the tensile behavior. But suppose you have fluctuating load. For example a bridge there can be different fluctuating load, different vehicles, different number of vehicles are passing through it, different wind velocity is there. So these are fluctuating loads, right? Sometimes the load is uh, quite high, sometimes the load is very uh, nominal. So what is the response of the material to fluctuating load that is studied under the fatigue behavior? Now what is creep behavior? Creep behavior is basically what is the property of a material at elevated temperature. At higher temperature the material property varies from that at room temperature or that at lower temperature. So what exactly is the behavior at elevated temperature that is studied under the creep behavior. Impact behavior is uh, basically you have a material and you provide a load to it in the form of an impact. So what is the response of the material under impact that is what is studied in impact behavior. This is also we can think about it as fracture mechanism. What is the fracture mechanisms of a particular material. So these are broadly the main mechanical properties that we will be studying in this unit. There are many other properties but these kind of gives you a uh, holistic picture of the most important requirements that are tested by engineers while choosing a material for a particular application. Okay? Now let us start by understanding something about stress and strain relationship. So to begin with what is stress and what is strain? There are two types of stress and strain we will be discussing here. One is known as the engineering stress and strain and the other will be true stress and strain. This slide will mainly deal with engineering stress and strain. Okay, so suppose we have a block in which I applied a load or a force F and the area of cross section of the block, the area of cross section is A naught. Okay, so when you apply force upward and downward then the material will try to resist any transformation but the material will actually transform. So the engineering stress is force applied per unit area. So force by original area is engineering stress. Engineering stress is denoted by a sigma. Okay, and engineering strain is what is the change in length per unit original length. So this applied force will result in a change of length, change of dimension of the body. So how much change of dimension is taking place that is what strain denotes. Suppose initially it was a length L0 and on application of force what happens is what happens is there is a elongation of the body. Okay? There is a elongation of the body. And the final length now becomes LF. 
LF. So there is a change of length delta L is equal to LF minus L naught. This is the change of length and engineering strain will be change of length per unit original length. Fine. Now that we know engineering stress and engineering strain, I'll give you an idea about what is the difference between engineering stress, engineering strain and true stress, true strain. As we have seen, both for engineering stress and strain, the denominator is the initial dimension. For stress, it was the initial area of cross section. For strain, it was the initial length. But if you think about it, as soon as the dimension starts changing, since the volume needs to be constant, an increase in length will lead to a reduction in area, right, for the volume to be constant. Because volume is equal to length into area. So L initial into area initial is equal to length final into area final. Now since L final is more than L initial, area final will be less than area initial. We have not taken into account the area instantaneous area till now. That is exactly what true stress and true strain does. True stress takes into account the instantaneous area at any time. So true stress is more like F upon A uh, at any time T. Okay, And strain, true strain is also dependent on the instantaneous dimensions. So that is the basic difference between engineering terms and the true terms. But for most of the applications, most of the figures of stress and strain that you will see, you will encounter engineering stress and engineering strain because they are much easier to handle and they kind of give you the basic idea of the material property. True stress and true strain are a bit complicated to denote. Fine. With this idea of stress and strain, let us see what are the different possible ways to study the stress and strain relationship. As I have said that a stress, that is a application of a force will lead to change in dimension, that is it will produce strain. So under what conditions can this can be tested? This can be a tensile test where basically you have a sample and tensile means you are trying to extend it. Okay, so this is tensile test. You can have a compression test. You have a sample and you are trying to compress it. So this is compression test. This is tensile. Then what you can have another is you can have a shear. So you have a body and you try to shear it. And that will have a stress strain behavior. So you can study stress strain behavior in tensile, compression, shear as well as in torsion. Torsion is basically twisting the sample. You try to, you have a sample right and you try to twist it. You try to twist it and see how much twisting is possible for how much twisting force. So that gives you torsional test. But the most important type of stress strain test that you'll encounter or the most practically applicable stress strain test that is used for the general mechanical property study is the tensile kind. Okay, so we'll from now on see the tensile test study. This is an example of tensile test. Okay, so in tensile test what you have is this is a tensile specimen. These are standard dimensions. I'll not go into the standard dimensions. They are available in uh, the standard dimension textbooks and uh, therefore they do not add to the physical knowledge so I will leave that aside but uh, I'll s discuss what are the different things so this is my sample it can either be flat or it can be rounded the grip section can be rounded if that is rounded this is also rounded if the thing is flat then everything is flat. So basically it can have a particular depth or it can be a radius. This is the overall length. This region is basically put to grip. So basically what happens is you have the tensile test machine which will provide a grip here. It will hold here and here and this grips one will remain stationary and the other will be pulled. 
okay so this is the grip region then this region actually this dot to this dot is the gauge length and this gauge length is where the actual measurement is being done so this initial gauge length is the L naught and we measure the change in this gauge length continuously during the tensile test is going on so for any moment we have the stress measurement how much load is applied we know therefore we have the stress measurement and against all the stress measurement we have what is the instantaneous dimension at that moment thereby we find out the strain okay so if we take a sample this was the initial sample which was put under tensile testing and what happens you can see is that basically there has been a necking this is known as a necking there has been a necking and if further tensile test is carried out then there will be a fracture the material break, will break into two pieces therefore this test gives us this diagram now what is this diagram this diagram is an engineering stress versus engineering strain diagram I will not go into the details of this uh, we will discuss the details the terminologies in the next class but just to give you an idea what is happening here is as you are increasing the stress right as you are increasing the load the strain is increasing that is the uh, dimension the length of the material that is the extension keeps on increasing it keeps on increasing until you reach something known as UTS which is the ultimate tensile strength this is kind of the region where the necking starts now once the necking starts even at lower stress the material keeps on yielding and ultimately at fracture stress the material will fracture so this gives you an idea about how much strength can the material endure before fracture takes place how much strength the material has before necking starts how much strength does the material has before plastic deformation starts we'll go into details of that in the next lecture so i hope you got an idea about what is the importance of different mechanical properties in this lecture and also a glimpse into the engineering stress strain and the tensile testing process next lecture we will discuss in details about the engineering stress engineering strain curve and uh, we'll see how this pans out and what is the importance of this engineering stress strain curve so till our next lecture have a great day goodbye